Perry at Fair Oaks. Jerry, you've got to put all your things away before taps, you know. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Hey, Lee, do you think it'll be all right? Shh, Jerry, no unnecessary talking. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, now you can talk, Jerry. What were you going to say? I don't know now. I forgot. <laughs> well, you understand why you can't talk in the library. A lot of fellas are studying there and doing research. Sure, I know. I, I just forgot. Well, what do you think of our library? Sure is a nice one. Sadie, you've got almost any kind of book you'd want. Mm, yes, it's very complete. <sighs> Gee, it's sure pretty here at night. All these big oak trees and the moon shining through and so quiet. Boy. <laughs> a lot different than the circus, huh, Jerry? I'll say it is. Hey, what time is it? Mm, just a little after 9.30, I guess. Mm, we go to bed at 10. That's right. It sure is early for me to be going to bed. Why, when I was with the circus, sometimes I didn't get to bed until way after midnight. You know, right now, if I was back with a circus, I'd just about be going on with my act. <laughs> and here you are getting ready for bed. <laughs> yep. I wonder if I'll be able to sleep tonight. Well, sure you will. Why shouldn't you? Well, tonight's the first time in a long, long time that I haven't gone to bed on a train. <laughs> well, I'll fix that for you. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> I'll stay up all night and shake your bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea. And ring a bell and go toot toot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, hey, Miss Jerry. You see that cadet cutting across in front of the fountain? Uh-huh. Well, that's the cadet officer of the day, Cadet Captain Duncan. Now, don't forget to salute him. Oh, I won't. Uh, you going to talk to him? Mm-hmm, sure. I want you to meet him. Here he comes now. Uh, Captain Duncan, I'd like you to meet Cadet Jerry Dubin. Glad to know you, Dugan. You're the new man that just came in today, is that right? Yes, sir. What quarters have you been assigned? Uh, he's rooming with me. Oh, fine. Well, I'll see you later. Good night. Good night. Good night. He seems like a nice fella. Mm-hmm, yes, Duncan's all right. <laughs> Very strict, though. Nothing keeps him from doing his duty as he sees it. <laughs> that's the way to be, I guess. A cadet officer is just supposed to be just like any other officer. <laughs> that's right, Jerry. Hey, look, isn't that Major Davis just coming out of Custis Hall? Mm, I can't quite see. Oh, yeah, that's him. I wonder if he wanted to see me again today. When I left his office, he said he'd see me later. Well, did he tell you to report back to him? No. Mm, well, I guess he didn't want to see you. You see, everything's done by direct orders here at Fair Oaks. He's coming this way. Oh, if he stops us, be sure to come to attention. Yeah, I know. Now, let's not talk now. Good evening. Well, Jerry, I see you were fitted out in your uniform. Yes, sir. Looks very good on you, Jerry. Have you seen all of the campus? Almost all, I think. Mm, I tried to show him as much as I could, sir. Mm -hmm. Did you get down to the lake? No, sir, we didn't have time. Well, you can see the lake tomorrow and get around to the horses, too. Yes, sir. Now, tomorrow morning, sometime after breakfast and before you go to your first class... I want you to drop into my office and pick up your book of cadet rules and regulations. And during your study periods tomorrow, look the book over. You'll be able to understand it, all right. But if there's anything that you can't get uh, quite straight, me will help you out with it. Yes, sir. Are uh, you uh, going to your quarters now? Mm, yes, sir. We just came from the library. Try to get all your things put away tonight before taps, Jerry. You'll have a very full day tomorrow. Uh, you can help him, Lee, if he needs any help. Yes, sir. I'll see you in the morning, Jerry. Good night. Good night, Major Davis. Good night, sir. Well, what do you think of the Major, Jerry? 
I think he's one of the nicest men I've ever met. <laughs> he reminds me a little bit of Mr. Randall. Now, don't forget to get that book of rules and regulations right after breakfast tomorrow, huh? No, I won't. Hey, what's in the book, Lee? Is it all about what to do and what not to do? Mm, that's right. And once you get your book, you're supposed to memorize every rule in it. It tells all about how to conduct yourself in the different buildings. About the cadet officers, the bulletin board, the different bugle calls, formations, inspections, and passes, and oh, everything. There must be an awful lot to it. Oh, it's not hard. You sort of learn things by watching the other cadets, too. What do you mean by inspection, Lee? Well, every Saturday morning, our rooms are inspected by cadet officers. <laughs> Believe me, they have to be just right. <laughs> and then, too, there are inspections in the line during drill. To see if our uniforms are all right, huh? Mm-hmm, and your hands and nails and hair, too. Oh, look, uh, Jerry, before we go in, I want you to see Davis Oak by moonlight. Davis Oak? Mm-hmm. See that big one there by the fountain? You mean the biggest one of all? That's it. The biggest and the oldest. Yes, that's Davis Oak. That tree, Jerry, is the reason for Fair Oaks being where it is. I don't understand. Well, it's like this. Major Davis's father founded this school many, many years ago. And when he was looking for the property to build on, he came out here. But this was all open country then, except for that big tree you're looking at. Weren't all these other beautiful oak trees here then? Mm, yes, but they were just little trees then. Mm. Davis Oak was the only full-grown tree. Major Davis's father, so the story goes pictured that tree right in the center of the quadrangle. So the school was really built around that tree. Mm-hmm. And isn't it beautiful? It sure is. Well, come on. The other fellows will be coming back from the library in a couple of minutes now. Okay. But, gee, I could stay out here all night. Mm -hmm. It's so still that... Well, you know, Lee, I kind of miss the circus right now. I mean, now that it's bedtime and... <laughs> <laughs> See, I was lonesome, too, for the first few days. <laughs> come on, Jerry. Well, there goes Jim Cooper and Glenn Radford. I guess I was wrong. We're not the first ones back to quarters after all. They're going in the room next to ours. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's their room. Hey, uh, where's Stubby's room? Mm, just down the hall from ours. Let's see, it's the third one, I think. And uh, Harold Linwell, where's his room? Uh, down at the other end of the hall. Well, here we are. Hey, uh, where'll I put my suitcase while I unpack? Uh, on the bed? Oh, no. Here on this bench. Don't ever put anything on the bed. You want a hand? No, I can make it. Well, look, Jerry, this is your drawer here. Okay. And uh, this right-hand top drawer is yours, too. That's for socks and handkerchiefs. Hey, what's that? Well, that's tattoo. That means get ready for bed. Here, I'll put these things away for you. Well, look at this. What? <laughs> these pictures of this elephant. Hey, and that shoe up on his head. <laughs> sure. That's El Mundo. That's the elephant I did my act with in the circus. All by yourself? I didn't know you did that. Why, sure. <laughs> I thought maybe you were just part of some act. I didn't think you were an elephant trainer. Uh, see this picture here, where I'm swinging from his trunk? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's some trick, all right. Yeah, and look at this one, where El Mundo's standing up and I'm standing right under him. Wow, did you make him do that yourself? <laughs> sure I did. Besides, I had to give all the commands in Spanish. In Spanish? What for? Because uh, he was a Spanish elephant and didn't understand English. Can you talk Spanish? Oh, only a few words. Just the commands I had to give to El Mundo. I learned how from Carmen Bendini. She was a tightrope walker with the circus. Well, that's sure interesting, Jerry. Uh, did you ever do any horseback riding? Well, there was a little colt by the name of Splendor, and I rode him, but not in the show. I just used to ride him for fun. I broke him in, too. And maybe it wasn't hard getting him used to the saddle and bridle. Mm -hmm. You sure must have had fun with the circus. I did. I even jumped with Splendor. High fences, too. Well, say, you might make one of the polo teams if you can ride that good. Oh. Hello, Morrison. At ease, Phillips. Attention, Dugan. What's all the chatter going on in here? I was just talking to Lee. Uh, he was just telling me about some of his experiences with the circus. Oh, so you were with the circus, huh? Uh-huh. He did his own act with an elephant. Uh, go on, show Red the pictures, Jerry. No, nah, never mind the pictures. Just tell me about it. Tell me that you were the man on the flying trapeze that flew with the air with the greatest of ease. Yeah. I didn't do an act on a trapeze. I gotta put this suitcase away now. No, you don't. You put it away for him, Lee. I want to hear all about the circus, Dugan. Go ahead. Go ahead, talk. Oh, let me alone. I, I've got to get ready and go to bed. Now, that's no way to treat company. I want to hear about the circus. Go on. Well, once we had a fire. It was in the horse top, and all the horses were trapped. Didn't look like they could be saved, and then... You ran two miles with a drinking cup full of water. Threw it on the fire and put it out. Hooray! Dugan is a hero. Oh, you don't want to hear anything. Mm, sure I do. This is all very interesting. What else? I'm not going to say any more. Oh, yes, you are. Tell me something exciting about the lions and tigers. Didn't anything ever happen to take your breath away? I want to hear about a real thrill. I'll tell you something that really happened, but don't kid me about it. It's true and... Go ahead, Dugan. Well, 
Once we had generator trouble and the lights started to flicker. Every light in the circus went out for a second or so and then went on again. Mm, that's a good story. Go ahead. Well, just as Jason, that's the lion tamer with the circus, went into the steel. The steel? What's that, Jerry? Well, that's the big enclosed ring where the wild animals work. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I know that. You just listen, Phillips. Well, his act had just started, and all the lions and tigers were in the steel with him. He was just about to put them through their tricks when the lights went out and didn't come on again. They stayed out. The audience went wild, and even the performers got scared. They figured the lions would jump on Jason. Mm, okay, that's good. Now, I'll finish it. And just then you ran right out among all the wild animals and you had a big birthday cake with a lot of candles on it. You lit the candles. The wild animal trainer finished his act and everyone lived happily ever after. Ah, oh, what's the use of telling you anything? Because I like it. Here at Fair Oaks, we don't get to hear about a circus every day. Go on, Dugan, one more story. Uh-uh, that's all. Oh, so you won't talk, huh? Oh, let up, Red. You keep out of this, Phillips, or I'll be asking on you for some favors. Well, Dugan, as long as you won't talk, how about turning on the radio for me? You no, know we aren't allowed to play radios after tattoo sounds, Red. Yeah, turn on the radio, Dugan. Now you're learning to take orders the way you should. We'll get in trouble for this, Red. That so? Turn it on louder, Dugan. Louder, I said. There, is that loud enough? Yeah, that's fine. You want to dance? Turn that on. What are you doing in here, Marson? Oh, just visiting with the new man, Duncan. Tattoo and call to quarters are both in. Go to your room, Marson. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> good night. Now, who turned that radio on? Well, you see, sir, it was... I did, Captain Duncan. You know better than that, Phillips. You're not setting a very good example for a new man. I'm going to have to give you two demerits for this. Yes, sir. Get ready for bed. The taps will be sounding any minute now. What did you take the blame for, Lee? Oh, I was afraid you were going to tell Duncan the truth. Sure I was. And he ought to know. No, Jerry. That's one thing we don't do here at Fair Oaks. And we settle all our scores among ourselves. But you got two demerits for something you didn't do. Oh, that's nothing, Jerry. I hadn't worked them off with two hours of extra study. And I can use the time anyway. <laughs> Just forget about it. Come on, get into bed. I'll switch the lights off. Someday that red morse... Forget it, Jerry. Well, good night, Jerry. Good night. <laughs> 